Next part of this is the uh, <coughs> gauge pattern. Uh, in this particular case, uh, this is a BG. Um, to be familiar with these letters, you would just have to memorize all of them like we kind of do because we look at them so often. Uh, but these are typical patterns of strain gauges we offer. This is a uniaxial one, widely used. We recognize this. This is probably one of the most common strain gauges we sell. And in general, you select these when you know the direction of the strain field, you know direction, and it needs to be a uniaxial state of stress. That's a perfect application for that. If it's a biaxial stress state like we talked about before, then a lot of times you go to a gauge that looks like this. It's got two grids on it. One of them is perpendicular to the other. Now you might ask, well, could I use two of these instead of one of these? And certainly you can. You could do that. The only drawback is that this is going to be very accurate with respect to being 90 degrees to that. And you and I, when we're trying to put them on a surface and do that, we're not as accurate. So in general, I'd say go to T rosettes, but if you use two of these, you can accomplish the same thing. If you're not sure of direction, this is the type of strain gauge to choose. This is a three element, it's called a rectangular style rosette. It has uh, three grids on it, and this is at a 45 degree direction. So this one is 45 degrees from there, this one is 45 degrees from there. The reason that you use these is that you can solve for principal strains and direction. The equations are very well known and published. They're published on our website. They're also part of our data acquisition systems and they can solve for principal strains for you based off of you using a three element rosette. And then the last one over here is a dual shear pattern. This one is commonly used for applications where you're trying to measure torque. Uh, it's got two grids on it that are at a plus or minus 45 degree direction, which corresponds to the maximum strains when you're on a shaft in torsion. Uh, this one also has a common electrical connection in between, so it forces you to use a half bridge type of circuit. It forces you to do that. Uh, this one is also sometimes used in material testing, uh, sometimes with composites. Uh, you may be looking for some of its properties, such as the shear modulus, and there's a, a test standard written around using this type of gauge to find it.